Hi, this is Ogie with Visual Impact and in this video I will attempt to unpack all the new products the Blackmagic Design announced at NAB. We have some exciting new cameras, new feature-packed version of Resolve, new switchers and loads more. Without wasting a second of your time, I really want to get into this and start with the new cameras because there's a few of them. Starting with the Blackmagic Ursa Cine 12K. This is their new top-of-the-range camera featuring a new full-frame 12K sensor with a built-in low-pass filter. The new camera comes with a PL and locking EF mounts included, which are interchangeable. And also in his presentation, Grant referred to the new camera as the company's dream camera. Optimized for high-end cinematography, the Ursa Cine can record at some staggering resolutions including 12K by 8K, open gate 3x2 at up to 80 frames per second, 12K widescreen up to 120 frames per second, and a host of others including support for just about any lens under the sun including Super 35, 4 perf, and 6x5 anamorphic. The interesting part about the new camera is that it uses a brand new media to record onto, and Blackmagic Design calls it a memory module. The camera will ship with an 8TB one included. The new media is based on M2 SSDs which are super fast, making it easy to sync both proxies and Blackmagic Pro to the cloud. There's also a host of new accessories that Blackmagic has designed for this brand new camera, including two new base plates, one a 15mm, the other one a 19mm, and I do believe the 19mm also have support for the 15mm bars. There's also new Ursa Cine grips, as well as a new Ursa Cine EVF. Now this viewfinder is quite interesting because it is also compatible with the other new camera which we'll talk about in a second. One other thing to note is that the external monitor on the back of the flip-out LCD uh, now actually has a color display. The LCD monitor itself is fully articulating, allowing you to flip it and slide it back into the camera, which is super useful in situations where you kind of need to make sure that the monitor is not sort of in the way when you're doing handheld uh, shooting or just when you're changing settings. There's also a rear-mounted USB-C port uh, to allow recording to external discs, which is very, uh, very much in line with Blackmagic kind of style of developing their cameras lately. The camera also comes with two 12G SDI outputs, which can output 4K UHD to two separate external monitors. Flipping the camera on the other side, the AC side of the camera, the assist station LCD monitor um, comes with a sunshade, which is also very useful. And since we have brand new media, we of course need a way to read that media. The Blackmagic Media Dock is exactly purpose-built for this reason. It takes the new memory modules and features dual power supply with built-in redundancy, four 10G Ethernet connections for connecting directly to PCs uh, or laptops, which is great for DIT stations, and also when you want to access the cloud quickly. The Ursa Cine wasn't the only new camera that Blackmagic announced. Grant also unveiled a new box-style camera called Pixis. The new Pixis 6K will be available in three models with three different lens mounts. One of them is L mount, the other is EF, and the third one, which is slightly more expensive, is PL. The Pixis inherits the same 6K full-frame sensor with a built-in low-pass filter from the Cinema Camera 6K. Uh, however, as I said before, it's all wrapped in a very interesting new uh, boxy shape. The camera has a single 12G SDI output, 10 gig Ethernet, USB-C for recording to an external disk, and dual CF Express Type B slots, which are also dust protected. The large touchscreen LCD on the side makes it easy to navigate through the menu and assign key functions to the assignable buttons. The Pixis records Blackmagic RAW and H.264 proxies, which can be uploaded directly to the Blackmagic Cloud. It's also compatible with all Ursa Cine accessories, such as the Cine Grips and the new EVF, which is quite interesting. I have a slight suspicion that this camera will be quite popular. It's very compact. It also uses uh, the Sony BPU batteries, uh, which are very available, they're affordable. Grant also mentioned that they are working on a true 65mm large format 17K sensor, which is absolutely mind-blowing. And this will be available in the new Ursa Cine 17K, which is set to be released sometime later this year. They're still working on the sensor, tweaking uh, things around it. Grant mentioned that this is the size of roughly of 70mm 5 per film. The Ursa Cine 17K will also come with two lens mounts, LPL and Hasselblad, accommodating large format cine primes and zooms such as the ID signatures and a host of other very interesting large format photo lenses converted to cine lenses and a bunch of other really cool stuff that you can do with. Uh, we're really excited about this one. It will be more expensive than the Ursa 12K. Uh, we don't really know much about it. 
Um, I highly recommend you check out the presentation. Uh, Grant gave some really good uh, info about that uh, very interesting new camera. Moving on to the micro color panel for Resolve. It's a handy and affordable miniature uh, color panel for DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it features uh, a portable but very rugged design. And what's interesting here is that the trackballs are actually pretty high quality. Um, they're new. The unit also features precision machine control knobs for fine tuning primaries. Colorists on the go can also mount their iPod Pro in the dedicated slot, which I believe is probably the coolest addition to this product. There is also a new DaVinci Resolve replay editor panel, which is a piece of equipment meant to be used in conjunction with the cloud and HyperDeck recorders. The workflow seems a little bit over my head at this stage, but from what I understand, you can utilize Resolve to do the actual playback while the recording is handled by the cloud and HyperDeck setup. This will also allow you to convert the replay into a timeline in Resolve from where you can actually directly share it on social media platforms. Grant did a pretty good explanation of this, much better than I can, so you're probably better off looking at the full presentation via the link below. And speaking of Resolve, of course, there is a new major release called Resolve 19. It comes with a huge range of new and very useful features, leveraging the power of AI when it comes to tracking, noise reduction, and advanced audio and fusion effects, among many others. The edit page allows for audio transcriptions to be used to edit the timeline itself and also replace text, saving you a lot of time. Color Splice is another major new feature on the color page, which allows colorists to make more filmic adjustments to the image based around color vectors, including a dedicated skin vector. The new IntelliTrack edition uh, uses the DaVinci Neural Engine to better track effects and stabilize the image. Also new in Resolve 19, there is a new AI Assist noise reduction tool called Ultra NR, which again uses the DaVinci Neural Engine to improve noise reduction. Moving on to the live production side of things, uh, there's also quite a lot of products here as well, starting with the Blackmagic Design Atom 2ME Constellation 4K. This switcher is an upgraded 4K version of their already existing HD model with wide support for signals of up to 4K UHD up to 60 frames per second. You get 20 12G SDI inputs with a built-in standard converters on each. There's also a new Atom 1ME Constellation 4K switcher, which is basically an upgraded 4K version of the already existing HD model again, uh, or you can view it as a more compact version of the ME2 Constellation 4K. With the 1ME Constellation 4K switcher, you get 10 12G inputs and similar functionality to the 2ME. The Blackmagic Media Player 10G is a Thunderbolt capture and playback solution dedicated to broadcasters, featuring 10G Ethernet and 12G support which actually makes it quite easy to integrate into already standard broadcast environments. In his NAB address, Grant also showed off their new Atom software controller called the Atom Micro Panel, which is actually quite cool. It's a physical interface tasked with performing the actual switching duties of the software. Now, the settings are still done on the computer in the software itself, but the actual switching can be done now physically through this device. It connects via Bluetooth or USB-C and has a large internal battery. High quality physical buttons also program preview roles, as we're all familiar from uh, other panels, and can control up to 4 ME switchers, and has dedicated buttons for macro and downstream keys, as well as a high quality fader. And when it comes to developments in the 2110 IP video arena, Blackmagic developed their own open standard compression codec. They call it Blackmagic IP10, and it's quite cool because it allows them to efficiently compress Ultra HD up to 60p, and send it over traditional low cost 10 gig ethernet. This makes it possible for them to create um, an exciting new range of uh, SMT2110 IP video converters, including mini converters such as the Mini IP to HDMI, Mini Bidirect 12G, the Blackmagic 2110 IP presentation converter, and a lot more. Now this area can seem a little bit more IT focused, but actually Grant I think did a fantastic job of, of explaining it in sort of quite non-IT terms. Someone, some like me who's you know not an IT expert. Um, can pretty much get this. So highly recommend you kind of delve into that area uh, of the presentation if, if this is something that interests you. And speaking of IP video, Blackmagic also unveiled the first Ethernet switcher dedicated to the film and TV production industry. The new Blackmagic Ethernet Switch 360p is a high performance, low latency switch with 16 10 gig Ethernet ports, which makes it actually a very easy a plug and play solution for broadcasters uh, utilizing IP video. I think IP video is one of these uh, areas that uh, will actually have a lot of new developments in the future, not just from Blackmagic, but also other manufacturers. 
And another new product you can integrate into your IP-based workflow is the SmartView 4K G3 monitor. Now with two 12G SDI inputs for UHD support up to 60p, as well as all standard SD and HD standards that will automatically switch between them uh, as needed. The SmartView 4K also supports 3D LUTs, frame guides and focus peaking. And last but not least, there is also a new video hub called 120 by 120 12G, which includes a whopping 120 inputs and 120 outputs, all 12G SDI compliant. This is quite a tall unit, it's uh, 6 rack units tall. Uh, and it supports all video standards from SD, HD and Ultra HD. And you also get all the familiar buttons and controls alongside a very quality front knob with a mechanical clutch for a more intuitive response. Now I understand this has been a bit of a longer video than expected. I really appreciate you watching it if you stuck around until the end. For any questions about any of these new products, do let us know in the comments or get in touch uh, via the contact details below and we would see you in the next video.